We are going to a seafood restaurant. I know that sounds peculiar, but hear me out. There is a dish on here that is, to me, the highest expression of foie gras, which, to be frank, is not a dish that I generally love. But there's something about the preparation that Rich Teresi has done that has rendered it, to me, one of the most perfect expressions of the dish, and also one of the lightest and airiest ways you can eat meat. kind of an outlier on the menu in general, you know, because we developed it, took us a very long time to develop. I took it off the menu a lot of times because I want this to be the, the best seafood restaurant in the world. Once the ribbon came out, I thought to myself, that really looks like a ribbon. So the reason why we put it in that glass box is because I thought if we put a bunch of them together and we put it on something square, it would feel like a gift to the table. And, and the foie gras is the bow on the top of the gift. So I feel like it would be, it, would, it was a festive way that most people wouldn't get that, but like it looks festive anyway. And I wanted it to be shareable. I wanted the first part of the meal to be things that people do together. Making the foie gras is the same as making a traditional foie gras tree. We soak the foie gras, we leach out the blood. The next day we let the foie gras temper. We very carefully clean it of all the veins. Traditionally, how you make a tureen, after the, the veins are very nicely clean, the foie gras is opened up, we marinate the foie gras. The next day, we pass it. We set it into the mold, which is basically the exact same shape of the traditional cheese that you would shape on this piece of equipment. We put it in a little pot like that, torch it. So you're, you're putting it into sub-sub-zero yes. temperature. And then from there, we start going and we get beautiful ribbons. Okay, so here is the moment of truth. Look at this most impressive looking foie gras creation. I mean, it really does. It looks like a, it's like a carnation. This is a dehydrated, deep fried, candied, freeze dried. I don't know what else they do. It all kinds of crazy science goes into making this chip, but it is as light and crispy as a potato chip, but it's made of orange. So I'm actually gonna just stick my knife right in and take out, that's basically one full shaving. It's remarkable because it's really all about the texture initially, that crunch. I mean, you can probably hear it, it's super crisp, really great texture. It really is the pure essence of foie gras, like the finish is pure foie gras, but you go through all of these other things along the way to get there. You go through that crunch, you get to the, the hit of the citrus, the fennel pollen, it really has that sort of, that summery flavor. And then you have the foie gras itself that does coat your palate, it just coats your mouth in that rich unctuousness. Because it's been rendered so thin, Right? When you're eating like a big piece of foie gras, it's like solid, it's thick, it's rich. This is much more airy, it's much lighter. It really just sort of floats above the palate in a sense. The texture is remarkable. Even just putting it onto the chip, it feels like it's just, there's nothing there at all. It's almost like air. Incredible. I'm actually not the biggest fan of foie gras. I find it kind of a obvious and almost puerile expression of meat eating, if that makes sense. It's just that it's just pure fat. It's luxurious and I get that. And I think that you should eat every part of the animal. But to me, there's just other things that I would rather eat than foie gras generally. But in this case, this is such a pure expression of this cut that I really think that, that I may not love foie gras, but I crave this dish. I think that says something. That Rich can make something that is such a great expression of it that is so obviously foie gras yet at the same time kind of defies expectations. I recommend heartily coming to the pool. We'll see you on the next episode of The Meat Show.